All right, so yesterday with no internet, no Wi-Fi, none of that stuff at school, we had to go old school, and we, but we were able to still introduce all of the weather instruments, yes? And honestly and truthfully, I don't think weather instruments is something that's extremely hard, and this review and the one that you do this afternoon during Rhyme is the last time that I'm really going to spend any lengthy amount of time on weather instruments because it's not something that I think is overly difficult. Um, I've already told you to put a big giant star beside the barometer because that's the most important one. Everyone in here knows what a thermometer does already. Don't get wind uh, vanes and anemometers mixed up and you'll be fine. The rest of them are pretty easy. So we're going to go through this today. That way I have a recording online even though I already posted like either one year ago or two, year ago, two years ago recording for this in your work this for this afternoon. And we'll go over that here in just a few moments. And um, we'll see what that looks like this afternoon because it's going to be brand new to me because I've never done that before with what we're doing for Rhyme today. So weather instruments. Yesterday we said the reason why we need to identify the weather instruments and what they do is so that we can predict upcoming weather patterns and weather phenomenon. And we need it's very important to be able to do that. And I think as we introduced each weather instrument yesterday, we took some time, and you'll be doing this this afternoon, one of the steps in rhyme, talking about how that weather instrument could be important in everyday life. And remember when we did that? We went through each instrument and said, how would this instrument be important in everyday life for each person? And we went through times that that might be important. So hopefully you paid attention and maybe took some notes on that. If not, maybe we can get back to some of that today. So we have the thermometer, which I think is the easiest of all of them, in my opinion, um, because it's something that we've talked about, we've seen, uh, and we, we broke in class yesterday, which is pretty awesome. My second class broke the thermometer. So I no longer have a thermometer. Uh, they were poking it and snapped it in half. I don't know why they were doing that, but they did what it did. Um, so what does a thermometer do? I don't have the definition up here. Glenn, what does a thermometer do? It measures temperature, right? A thermometer measures the air temperature. So again, yesterday I had a glass tube that had like a red alcohol liquid on the inside of it. Why do I not have thermometers with water on the inside of it, Brandon? It expands. So when it got cold, the, the liquid would go up. And when it gets hot, the liquid would go up. It would make no sense to use that. So they use another solution that actually expands and contracts like most normal things do. Um, and when they broke that out, that kind of got all over the place. Uh, and we cleaned that up. But again, we've talked about how thermometers work, right? When the sun heats up the thermometer, the molecules inside that little tiny tube start to move around faster and they expand. Therefore, when you read the little red line, it's a little higher because it tells you it's hotter. When it's colder, the molecules start to lose heat. They start to get a little bit closer together, which means that the uh, solution inside contracts. Now, there are obviously some different types of thermometers out there as well, uh, but that's the one that we'll talk about the most. Um, when would having a thermometer be important? Like there are some times yesterday we talked about that Maddox. So I know what kind of clothes to wear, says the guy in shorts and a short sleeve shirt when it's 20 degrees outside. Um, hey, man, like, trust, if I could wear that to school every day, I'd be in shorts every day. Because that's all I, shorts and a hoodie, I'm comfortable. But again, you do need to know what kind of clothes to wear, right? Dawson. Yeah, if there's going to be precipitation, right? The morning news people say there's a 100% chance of precipitation. If it's... If you look it down here, I don't know if it, you probably can't see the 27 degrees in the. Uh, uh, here, let me do this real quick. So, if there was a 100% chance of precipitation right now, and I'm looking down here and it's 27 degrees, we probably wouldn't be here, right? Because it's going to be either ice or snow, depending on what the other layers of just up above us are like. So, again, you need to know what the temperature is so you can tell what kind of weather you might possibly have. Now, I know this is a little backwards, girls, from what we did yesterday, but we did talk about the barometer. And I said this is probably one of the more important, if not the most important, uh, weather instrument we study because there's so many questions that revolve around it. What does the barometer measure? What does the barometer measure, Nolan? 
air pressure. And why is that important? What's the, what's the difference between this low air pressure and then the high air pressure reading on this side? Landon. You know what type of weather it is. So what are the two different types of weather we're looking at, Sadie, with high and low pressure? Happy weather is the H, it's blue, clear, cool, and sunny. And then we said for the L, the low pressure is lousy weather. We talked about how it's not always necessarily bad for it to rain, but that's just an easy way for us to remember it so we don't miss it on the quiz and the test, right? Happy weather is over here, clear, cool, and sunny. Lousy weather or low pressure is over here when it's rainy and stormy. So again, the barometer measures air pressure, and we just talked about all of this. And I think yesterday we were able to really get some good notes and write down those big blue H's and the big red L's that we will all see on the green screen when we're doing weather forecasts later on. Question, yes, sir. Next, probably one of the easiest ones to remember is the rain gauge. What does a rain gauge do, Veda? Measures how much it's rained. Now, we did take a little bit of time to talk about how we can be a little bit more accurate with our reading of a rain gauge, especially this one. Um, what can I do to make sure that my readings are more accurate with this type of rain gauge? We talked about this in class yesterday. Somebody knew. Somebody knew. Nope. <laughs> Dawson. Put it in the ground so it doesn't tip over. What else did we say? Landon. Yeah, read it each day at the same time and dump it out so that you're not leaving it in there and having to do some crazy math to figure out how much it rained between the next two days. There is a really weird question on the test that we'll, we'll go over before we get to it. Say, did you have anything else? No? Why? What was the one thing we said about this one that could be kind of weird since it has an open top, Brandon? Uh, if we left it out in the sun, there could be evaporation. Yep. So again, a rain gauge. It's not shocking that it measures... How much it rained. Here's one that we looked at. It's called either, you, you'll hear both on the test, wind vane or weather vane. I really think the picture kind of gives it away, and there won't always be a picture on the test. Shayla, what does a wind vane or a weather vane do? Wind direction. That's why when I see this north, east, south, and west, it's telling me what direction the wind is blowing. You might, this is the one, I don't, I don't know why. We could maybe try to find out why. Um, there's always like roosters and chickens. That's like a, you, you see that a lot. Yeah, I see, I see that a lot. I don't know why that's on there. Maybe there's a reason. I have no idea. Um, so we'll have to go back and try to look that up at some point. We'll figure that out. All right. A wind vane, weather vane, very simple, measures wind direction. Now, I don't know if this is next or not a cot. Uh, but what was that one w uh, wind instrument that we could get mixed up with a wind vane, but it does something a little bit different? Annalie, the anemometer. The anemometer measures the wind speed. I don't know if that's next on here. It is. There it is. Now, again, this is a very weird instrument. This has got a little bit. This up here at the top is a wind vane, but these little cups that are spinning are seeing how fast the wind is blowing. And we talked about yesterday about how that could be very important. If you're a firefighter, the faster the winds are blowing, the faster a fire could spread. Or if you're on a sailboat, if there's no wind, kind of a bad day to be sailing. If there's too high of a winds, still kind of a bad day to be sailing. You did just right. What else, guys? Yeah, if you're working way up in the sky, you kind of want to know how hard the winds will be blowing that day. That might change what's going on for you. Dawson? Yeah, knowing, knowing wind speed uh, if, you're, if you're a pilot, because if the wind is going against you, it takes longer to get somewhere. If the wind is blowing behind you, you get to move a little bit faster, which is kind of good. So anemometer is another one. A weather map. I think this is another kind of an easy one. We weren't able to pick one up and hold it in our hand, but it looks just like this. What does a weather map do, Jesse? It's a map. That shows what the weather's like somewhere. That's not a hard one, is it? Should we miss that? No, we shouldn't miss this or thermometer. The, honestly, the only thing we really got to make sure that we know is like hygrometer is kind of weird. 
and don't get wind vane and anemometer mixed up and this should be a hundred for pretty much everybody on the quiz it's not a super tough quiz weather maps weather maps show what the atmospheric conditions are what the weather's like right when you turn on the news they'll show the weather across all the united states then they zoom into north carolina and then they'll zoom into the triad which is what's most important to us right i really don't care what it's doing in wilmington today unless i'm going to wilmington later on today right doesn't matter to me what it's doing there because i'm worried about what's it going to do here if it's raining in wilmington that doesn't mean that we stay inside for recess. If it snows in Wilmington, doesn't mean that we don't go to school that day or have a remote day, right? We're worried about our local weather, and that's when we use the weather maps to kind of take a look at that. Hygrometer. There's like, there is kind of a trick to remember this one, um, and it's the only one that we really need to use this. Judy, do you remember the trick? Uh, who can help me out? A cot. Nope, not happy weather. The H in hygrometer is something, it, the hygrometer reads the humidity, how much moisture is in the air. Um, we're getting borderline uncomfortable. If you have 100% humidity, that means the air is fully saturated with water. It's, that's when you sweat just standing there, which is not fun at all. I don't like those days. Uh, yesterday was a fairly low humidity today, in, in my opinion, because when I went outside, it was this clear, cool, sunny, high pressure, beautiful right kind of a nice day last friday was kind of a perfect day take away a little bit of that wind and it would have been really awesome uh, but a hygrometer is the one that we said that we remember it measures humidity now i know someone said that they saw the h and they thought happy weather that's when you're talking about high pressure and low pressure a hygrometer measures the humidity in the air And I think that's going to be it for my folks at home. Smash the like button and subscribe. We're going to play a quick review game in here. Actually, more than one review game in here. And go over some words and start something new.